All right, introduction to the biology of soils. Start out with an Aldo Leopold quote. Land is not merely soil, it is the fountain of energy flowing through a circuit of soils, plants, and animals. This is what we talked about in the introduction of soil science, that it's not just a one static thing. It's this interconnected web of soil, plants, and micro and macro organisms um, that's always changing, always going through. And so this is just a quick shot of a soil food web depiction, um, just kind of showing how interdependent all of this is, but establishing that soil is a fundamental foundation part of uh, our food web. So forest floor dynamics, remember we talked about our horizons or soil layers, so we have the O horizon. Um, you don't need to remember these subcategories of the O horizon, but if you're interested, uh, it's categorized by the OI, OE, OA, and then we move into the A horizon, and then we have an E horizon in this picture as well. So the different um, subhorizons are just how decomposed the organic matter is. And it moves from unaltered, readily distinguished material all the way down to um, mostly decomposed leaves, um, but we're not seeing any mineral uh, content until we get to the A horizon. That's where we have our humic, um, non-layable carmine. We'll get into what that means more later. Uh, but it's a mineral soil, dark in color. Our E horizon, a zone of leaching, usually lighter in color, often gray. So primary soil biological components is the soil carbon. Then our microorganisms, our macroorganisms, or of our soil animals. And then we'll talk about the rhizosphere. So soil carbon... Um, soil carbon drives a lot of our nutrient availability for plants and animals. Uh, the importance of forests in the role of soil carbon. A little uh, note here that forests are able to sequester twice as much carbon below the soil than they are above it. So a lot of times we think, oh, we need to grow more trees, grow a forest, stop cutting down our forests. But it's really their ability to store that carbon in the soil for long-term cycling down there. Um, that is also really important when it comes to carbon sequestration. So decomposition of organic matter. First we start with what is decomposition. So it's the breakdown of a compound into simpler compounds. Um, so I think of like a really long carbon chain. When it gets decomposed, it forms like two shorter chains and so on and so forth. Uh, it's a simplification of structures, often for the gain of microorganisms. Eventually, these microorganisms decompose to the point that the plants uh, can then use those nutrients again as well. So does decomposition only occur from living organisms? Um, we will find out. Uh, the first step of decomposition, rainfall. So there's our answer. Uh, rainfall not a living organism, but really important for decomposition, for the material to get wet, uh, as well as rinse away some of those tannins and other defense chemicals from uh, the tree components, especially the leaves. Then the second step uh, is assimilation, or the ingesting um, of a cell membrane through a mouth, um, or easily digestible plant structures. So Fungi, bacteria, soil macrofauna are um, beginning to break down the cell membrane and break those long carbon chains into shorter components. Sources of organic matter. Uh, probably most often think of dead plant material. Um, so this is just naturally siphoned material. We also have dead animals in there um, in a more natural setting. Uh, think of those carcasses and things come to feed on them, but there's always some part of it um, left in the soil or from animal waste that is bro being broken down. And then there's living forms of organic matter in above the soil. This would be our plants. Uh, the importance of organic matter, we mentioned it uh, in some previous videos for soil structure and aggregation, uh, color, water holding capacity, 
uh, cation exchange capacity or nutrient supply and holding uh, biodiversity in our micro and macro organisms and plant communities. Uh, and then both of those drive uh, erosion control and water quality, so water filtering as well. Microorganisms are, we have our bacteria, which are single-celled organisms. These are the most abundant soil organism, mostly in aerobic uh, conditions. Some do operate better in anaerobic. Remember, aerobic means in the presence of oxygen. Anaerobic is when there's a lack of oxygen available. Mostly saprophytic, uh, but some can, are parasitic. And here a reminder that saprophytic means that they use decaying material. Uh, parasitic would mean that they feed on living material. Bacteria are incredibly plentiful and diverse in the soil, um, but in general not very tolerant of acidic soils. So as we get below a pH of 6.5 to 6, um, we lose a lot of our bacterial communities. Uh, while they are single-celled organisms, they often form colonies uh, and move through the use of water. They predominantly use chemical decomposition and uh, feature rapid regeneration, so when conditions are right, your bacterial population can quickly grow and sort of use all of those conditions that favor them. Um, mostly found in like the OA, A horizon, uh, because their movement is limited by water. Uh, Actinomycetes, or mold bacteria, it's just one subcategory of bacteria, uh, but we highlight it because it produces chemicals that inhibit other microorganisms. Some of those chemicals then protect plant roots from parasites, so sort of a symbiotic relationship going on here. Um, these are also some of them that fix nitrogen in the soil, and then many antibiotics come from uh, mold bacteria, and we talked about uh, in the intro video the importance of soil bacteria for development of pharmaceuticals. So this is uh, a family that they research and look for and test for future drug development. Uh, if you want more reading, uh, here's a really good paper um, on Xenomycetes benefit, benefit in soil and plant health. And uh, just highlight cycling of organic matter, inhibit several plant pathogens, um, improve crop production, and then improve availability of minerals, nutrients, and metabolites for plant growth regulators, as well as form stable humus. And we'll talk more about humus uh, in a later video. Uh, we also have fungi in the soil. So decaying fungi use hyphae as their primary body. Uh, these are sort of like uh, roots. It's an easier way or easy way to think of them, although they function differently. Um, but sort of these root structures in the soil. And then when we think of fungi, we always think of the mushrooms or uh, you know shell fungus, things like that. But these are really just the reproductive body parts of them. And so a lot of times there's more mass um, below the soil that we're not seeing. So there's something to keep in mind. They are a eukaryote or multiple celled organisms. The carbon is much greater per fungal organism. So an individual organism is much larger. But uh, the flip side of that is that there are fewer organisms than bacteria. If you think of bacteria, you know, a single cell organism forming a colony. Uh, that colony can be large, but that organism itself is sort of limited to that single cell. Um, fungi are also capable of both chemical and physical decomposition, so they can penetrate uh, materials using their hyphae. Slower growth and regeneration than bacteria, but um, more longer living and they can decompose both lignin and non-lignin bound cellulose uh, considered to be found in litter more than bacteria so again they're able to penetrate dead leaves they're able to spread uh, broader and deeper in the soil profile 
as well as being more tolerant of acidic pH than bacteria. So a lot of times our forests are fungal dominated due to that long, slow growth um, and being more tolerant of an acidic pH. Mycorrhizae fungi uh, form a mutualistic relationship with plants. So the fungus gets carbon, the plant gets phosphorus, water, uh, maybe some protection from the pathogens. They also serve to exponentially increase the surface area of a plant's root system to acquire all those other resources. Uh, decomposition rate, so approximately three to five years for litter to become recalcitrant, which means that the um, sort of labile carbon has all been used up and uh, organisms take a lot longer to get anything out of that material then. So it kind of follows this curve of a decrease in mass very quickly, and then that'll slow down over time and take, be much longer. Um, so it's important to have litter present in various stages of decomposition. This allows for more niches in microbial environments and for different 